Hello, and welcome to this special edition of Oldbridge Outlook. My name is Jacob Turchi, and I'm filling in for Gene. We're joined here by Mayor Owen Henry, and today's topic of conversation is COVID-19, the coronavirus, the spread, and what the township has been doing. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you for having me again on. I'll try not to call you Gene yes. for the first time in over eight years. It's fine. We look very somebody... similar, so yes. I can understand yeah. that. You're the younger Gene. <laughs> Okay, so but thank you for having me. I appreciate this opportunity and thank you for coming in and filling in. Yes, thank yeah, thank you. It's an honor. So let's begin. Uh, what are some of the precautions that Oldbridge has been taking to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in the township? I'd say we reacted um, a little over a week ago when, uh, when the, the virus first entered the United States. We started closing down or uh, eliminating programs in town. The first one that was eliminated was our senior citizen or Silver Lining Center was immediately shut down because uh, we were told that at-risk um, people of a certain age should not get together in groups, so we eliminated um, the Silver Linings program. Then we went on to our special needs program, Camp Robin. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've done, you know, we've taken steps. Our recreation programs have ceased for, for time being. And just recently, we've shut down our buildings here in Oldbridge to the public. Um, our staff is still here. The buildings are open for business, but the public has been denied access to all our facilities now to help, sp to help stop the spread of the virus. And that's going to be what, what stops um, the continued, as we say, the, the curve. Mm -hmm. As uh, we're trying to eliminate the contact, that social distancing, and the best thing that we felt to do was to close the buildings to the public. Because on a normal basis, you know, hundreds if not thousands of people come to these facilities on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that uh, the municipality and the township is closed down to the public, and it is until further notice. Correct. But it is worth noting that the township is still providing services. Can you speak to what services are still being provided in Old Bridge to residents and how they may have been affected or altered due to the coronavirus? Well, we're trying to conduct business as usual, but unfortunately, these are unusual circumstances. So all our online services if you did anything with the township online before you can continue that and we encourage people to go online and see what services are available we are here available by phone you can call the township um, we are available by email you can email any department if you have a question you can actually come to the building we have an area out in the foyer where you could call and talk uh, to a person but you will not be allowed into the building mm -hmm. unless you're here on professional business um, so there's pretty much everything is, is up and running. There are a few services that we're, we're trying to uh, get back online, such as marriage licenses, where you physically need to be seen by someone. And we're going to see if we can set that up uh, with appointment only and any other service that we need a wet signature where we actually, you actually need to come to town hall. We're probably going to arrange a, a way where you can make an appointment and come in and we'll have the protocol in place where we will be able to meet with you in person under certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to limit the disruption. There are some disruptions, but uh, we, are, we are open for business. All township business is being conducted. Um, we're, we're ahead of the curve here in Oldbridge when it comes to services. Right. It is worth noting that certain services such as uh, the police force and fire department, they are all still functioning just in case anybody the, is concerned. The police, as we are, we are, we stand ready to respond to any and all emergency calls. Uh, uh, but again, there's a different approach. Mm -hmm. If you call our dispatch, you will be given a series of questions to answer, and then we will respond according to your answers on those questions by taking the extra precautions that need to be in place for our first responders. Right. Uh, but uh, some of the the areas, the, the public works yard has been shut down. So people who normally would bring their recyclables here, they can't any longer. They need to do, they are being forced to recycle them at curbside. Right. So that, that's, uh, that's one of the things where, well, it's outdoors, but, but it's still, the interaction with the public has been um, limited. Mm -hmm. And that's for everybody's safety. Right. So if you have recyclables and they're curbside recyclables, please, please use the, you know, the service that comes to your house every other week. Yes. And if you have a question about that, please call us. Okay, excellent. And I think especially at times like these, communication between uh, not just the state government, but local township governments such as Old Bridge and township municipalities is really important to get accurate information out there. Yes. What's open, what services are being in place, what effects it may have. Uh, how have you, how important is maintaining that communication to you and to this township and what means have you been utilizing to do that? Sure, great, great question. Um, it's so important that we get the information out there to our residents. Mm -hmm. But in this case, 
it, it changes so quickly. Yes. Um, it's a very fluid, they've used the word fluid so many times, a very fluid condition where you might say something one minute and 10 minutes later you have to re either retract that information or you have to change that information. So it's been a challenge since day one. And there's a chain of command that has been set up. Federal government, state government, county government, local government. So we get our information um, from the agencies uh, above us. Mm -hmm. um, so some, some, sometimes that information is changing, and it does, it changes on a daily basis. Uh, it's important that the residents know the coronavirus is here in Old Bridge. We have it. We do have some positive cases. We have some cases pending. But again, that information can't come from the municipality. Everyone will see every day there's a state update, and it gives it by county by county. And sometimes they do announce the names of the towns where they are, but we don't have the liberty uh, to release that information because of the chain of command that has been put in place and uh, the problems that may occur by actually giving names and locations. Uh, you can only imagine the chaos that that might cause. Um, so we're working very closely to get the information out. Uh, with our schools closed, I think a lot of information went out through our school district, um, common sense. Um, approach to um, just the things that are going on. I encourage every resident in the township of Oldbridge to visit our township website or any other social that we sponsor. I, I caution anyone getting their information off any other social media page um, or these, pro these individual pages or um, Facebook pages that are just not sanctioned by anyone, nor are they protected anyone from false information. A great resource has been the CDC. Mm -hmm. Anyone can just Google CDC. They will get a plethora of information. It'll take them days to read all the publication about the virus. Another great um, informational for here in New Jersey is the New Jersey Department of Health. Right. They set up a complete uh, website with answers to any question that you would have in regards to the virus, symptoms, what to do, um, how to protect yourself. Um, it's just that information is available and I think it's, it's up to you to go out there and get it so you can protect yourself, protect your family, uh, protect your neighbors. Mm -hmm. So I, I encourage everyone to go to New Jersey Department of Health. Township services, if you wanna know if what's going on as in regards to the township, please look at our website. We put up press releases almost on a daily basis. We have our Facebook page. Um, we have the township website constantly being updated. As we get the information, I promise we will release it uh, to the public. But the public has to take some kind of responsibility to go out there and get it. Mm -hmm. Don't just go on and believe everything that every, anyone tells you. Um, I found the news, a lot of the news has been reliable uh, coming out of, uh, from the governor's office. He's had press conf numerous press conferences. That information, as anyone sees, changes on a daily basis. Uh, so I encourage everyone to stay up to date. At least watch at least one news program uh, per day, so, it, um, so you can keep a, you know, a, a keen eye on what's going on around the world, around the nation, and around our state, and around our community. Um, so, and that's what differs this crisis from any other crisis. Uh, this is global, so we're all dealing with it. And that has caused some concern, some fear. I urge every resident, do not let fear or panic uh, control your decisions. Don't let this virus control you. You, as residents, have the ability to control the virus mm -hmm. by limiting your exposure to other people. And if you do, do need help, I urge you to please call your uh, health provider. Do not walk into an emergency room. Do not walk into, uh, do not come here if you're not feeling well. Call your health provider and you will get the instructions you need to, um, to take the next step, whatever might be required. So it's important, information is important, but bad information is almost as bad as no information. So please be able to decipher what you're reading and give it credibility as you see fit, but please don't panic. Right, and it's also worth noting, you mentioned that there was a chain of command, it goes federal, state, county, the county and then local. local. We're at right. local. And right. our county is Middlesex County right. Health Department. They're also a wonderful resource, yes. and I would also uh, recommend utilizing yeah, them Yeah, as well. exactly. Go to the Middlesex County Health website, and they will give you the links to all the other websites. Um, also of note is the state um, 
has set up a hotline, a 24-hour-7 hotline, 211. Mm -hmm. Should anyone in the state of New Jersey have a question, someone will be there willing to, uh, is ready to take your call and try to answer your question. Right. So I encourage anyone with, uh, with, uh, with symptoms, with, with a question about what's open, what's not open, to answer, to go to that hotline. Mm -hmm. uh, here in Old Bridge, uh, we are following the state guidelines. We have not superseded it. Um, like some towns have attempted to, but I believe those towns are now going to have to be pulling back from what they announced a few days ago as far as business closures. Mm -hmm. um, the state wants to keep a consistent um, message out there. They will adjust those closing, closings as needed. I think they'll be up on a daily basis. More and more facilities are going to be closed. But as of right now, the Township of Oldbridge and the rest of the communities in the state of New Jersey are following the governor's guidelines. So please stay tuned to that. Should a business that was open one day might not be open the next. So they need to be prepared for that. Yes, I think it's important that people in the community are aware that things are going to be changing and it might be very <coughs> rapid and they need to be on right. top of Another that. Another thing that's going to be changing now with the increase in testing. Mm -hmm. We know there's going to be an uptick in cases because more and more people, and it's been expected. It's not that the virus is getting any worse. It's just that more people are being tested. So we anticipate um, that, that cycle to keep going up. And I think that's what we're looking for. As the tests increase and the number of cases go down, that, that's what we're all hoping and praying for, praying for very shortly. And no one has been able to put a time frame on that. And I think the residents can control that by doing what, what the professionals are saying, the healthcare, the healthcare, you know, by following the guidelines that are out there. And that will make that duration of this crisis shorter. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we are following guidelines right now. We are yes. at safe distance apart. Yes, we're we're practicing every everything here in town, uh, social distancing. Um, we're limiting um, exposure to each other. Um, there's that TV show, The Designated Survivor, mm -hmm. um, but we are not prepared. But we are separating ourselves. Okay. Well, uh, please stay tuned. We will be back with more of Mayor Owen Henry discussing the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. Stay tuned. <music> Welcome back to this special edition of Old Bridge Outlook. Once again, my name is Jacob Turchi and I'm filling in for Gene. We are here with Mara and Henry and we are continuing our discussion of COVID-19, the coronavirus pandemic, Old Bridge's response and what to expect from here on out. So Mayor Henry, I wanna focus in more specifically on the township of Old Bridge, efforts that the township has done. Let's start with cleaning. Uh, what cleaning measures have been taken in Old Bridge and what areas of concentration has the township been cleaning? Uh, we've. Uh We've made it a point in all our buildings to have a constant vigilance about cleaning all services, um, and, I, and I mean doorknobs and doors, to protect our employees. Mm -hmm. And we want to, of course, we need to protect them and their families. Uh, we have enhanced our cleaning crew with uh, people from the township, and anyone who's in the building will see that they're constantly, constantly uh, cleaning surfaces. We're probably going to have to repaint everything wh when this is over because they're constantly cleaning everything. All our buildings, our trucks, 
our first responders have been equipped with, with cleaning. Uh, so when they do come in contact with the public, now they can sanitize their hands, they can wipe their vehicle down, uh, they can protect themselves from bringing the virus back in, into the building. Uh, so that's our main focus, and I encourage everyone to do that in their homes. Wipe the surfaces down. Don't let, if it is in your house, don't let it go outside your house. If someone is sick, even without the coronavirus, but even with the flu, we need to practice good hygiene at this point. Everyone needs to do it, and everyone can, uh, can contribute to that. I know cleaning supplies have, uh, are at a premium, at a shortage. Uh, we had to be creative here in town. We're making our own. Know, out of Clorox and whatever we can get them available. I believe cleaning supplies now are going to start coming back into the supply chain. I believe the president announced, a f a f you know, uh, almost like a wartime where he's, he's ordering production uh, to keep going to, pr to produce these items that, the, that, that have uh, become short in hand now. Mm -hmm. So I hope within a week or two there will be no shortage of, of hand cleaners and sanitizing and whatever other materials that we might need to protect ourselves and our families. But the township has taken it very, very seriously. And that's the reason we've closed our bail buildings to the public, because we can never control who comes into our building. Um, and we can't, you know, dip everybody in Lysol before they come in. Uh, but we do have somebody stationed at the door. If somebody should have to enter this building, they are directed to a specific location uh, to take care of their business, a phone, or we encourage them to use their cell phone so they don't have to touch a surface here in town. But if they do, it's being cleaned immediately af after, before and after they do leave. So mm -hmm. we're very serious. Yes. Uh, you mentioned uh, about cleaning supplies, and I think that's a very important thing because yes. people are worried about shelves going really quickly yes. and stuff like that and getting food and getting resources. Mm -hmm. And I think it's worth noting that in Old Bridge, residents and local businesses have been trying to step up and trying to do yes. things and trying to get food to people, get resources. Can you maybe outline some of the efforts that residents have done to support these local businesses and some of the major steps that these local businesses have done sure. to really support this community? At great a time great question. Energy? Anyone in Oldbridge who's been to a, a, a supermarket or a small store has seen a shortage of certain materials, toilet paper, paper towels, cleaning supplies. Um, but we've been um, notified that this, the supply of materials are still continuing to come into Old Bridge. I myself have gone to a number of establishments. There's still quite a bit of food on the shelves. They're restocking on a daily basis. Uh, of note, one of our local suppliers just recently, the Acme Supermarket on Route 9, is opening their doors. I believe it's between 7 and 9 to the adult community, the, seniors, the senior community, to get their shopping done uh, early in the morning. Um, anyone over 60, I believe, is the cutoff age to go into that shopping center. I think other stores are going to follow suit, but, I, but then again, that might change in a minute. So here we are saying it's only the Acme, but I think other stores will follow that. Uh, we ask everyone um, not to be hoarding material. I think a lot of uh, retailers have put limits on what you can buy, uh, how many units of you can buy, uh, that you can buy. Um, I don't believe there's going to be a shortage of food. I don't believe there's going to be a shortage of the basic things that we need uh, to survive. Uh, the water is still going to come out of our faucets. If you have to buy a filter, if there is a shortage of bottled water, maybe just purchase a filter uh, for now uh, before you um, buy thousands and thousands of bottled water. That might go bad after a few months. So, um, But the supply chain is coming, and I want the residents not to go out and panic about getting supplies. It's going to continue here in Oldbridge. We're fortunate enough we have a number of uh, stores and retail outfits that um, supply retail goods to our residents. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that when it comes to following these ideas of like when to keep things on stock, how many people mm -hmm. can buy certain things, a lot of that does come from officials who work in the government who are trying to ration things. You mentioned before there is a chain of command coming mm -hmm. from federal, state, county, local. And I think now more than ever, it's really important to listen to government officials who are coming from the sure. top, from the state. How has Oldbridge been following the guidelines that have been set by the state, and how have they been implemented, and how have you seen their impact in the community? Well, the state has declared a state of emergency uh, in the state of New Jersey, and we followed suit. We've declared a state of emergency here in Oldbridge, and that, that allows us to uh, have access to FEMA funding when it does start trickle down. Uh, to the local level. Hopefully all the additional expenses that we've uh, had to put out um, over the last uh, few weeks will be entitled to get a portion of that reimbursed so that this doesn't have an impact on our, on our, tax, on our tax base here in Oldbridge. 
uh, getting back to the businesses. A number of businesses in town have been closed, and I, you know, bars, restaurants to eat in, patrons. Uh, most of our uh, food establishments are, all of them are not allowed to have in-house dining, no sit-down dining. A lot of them now are uh, doing uh, takeout um, delivery, so I encourage every resident to uh, call the business ahead of time to find out, if they're, first of all, if they're providing those services. And if they are, please patronize those businesses at the local level. We all know the small businesses are our backbone of this community, and they're the ones suffering the, the biggest impact at this point um, because they've been forced to shut down and not... Um, a lot of businesses have just closed their doors because they don't have the opportunity. Our gyms, our, uh, and, and again, that list goes on and on. Just to, our schools, you know, private and parochial, are shut down here in Old Bridge. Um, universities, all our colleges are shut down throughout the state. Uh, the casinos are shut down. Uh, the nightclubs, performing arts centers, racetracks, movie theaters, gym and fitness centers, indoor malls are shut down. Indoor amusement parks and amusement facilities, you know, all non-essential retail, other retailers, are allowed to stay open till eight o'clock. So any, any business that is not listed on that site is open, and, but they have to shut down at eight o'clock. So if you can, patronize our local businesses. If you used to go out of town, maybe stay here in town and um, stay close to home, as I like to say. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's important, very important. Yeah, and I'd also like to add that a lot of uh, restaurants and places to eat have opened up services where they are able to deliver food right and I just want to point out it is very important to properly tip those people because they really are doing yes. great work. They're, being, they're getting hit the hardest. Yes. Our, uh, our service industry here in Oldbridge mm -hmm. where a lot of, a lot of people have uh, been told to go home. Yeah and I think uh, financially compensating those people even if it's short just a quick tip right. the same tip you would give somebody giving you know Chinese or pizza uh, it, it really goes a long way especially in times like these. And it's a great opportunity to have dinner with your family, everyone Absolutely, together. Yeah. Yeah. So finally, I want to end with just kind of a message to the community. People are understandably concerned. Yes. Uh, we don't want to incite panic, of course. We want to make sure that everybody is keeping their heads and everybody is listening and everybody's following the rules mm -hmm. as best they can. What is your final message to the residents of Old Bridge in order to keep their spirits up and encourage them to keep going keep social distancing and let them know that they're going to be okay at the end of well, this. Well, I just want the residents to know that Old Bridge has and will continue to work around the clock mm -hmm. during this crisis to make sure that your needs are, are met. I want you to be safe. I want you to be responsible. I want you to be uh, concerned. I don't, you want, I don't want you to, to live your life in panic. I don't want you to be afraid. Um, parents, you have a responsibility to uh, you know, take care of your children at this time. It's, it's new to us. I can only imagine what it is to, uh, uh, you know, a youngster just at that age where they're comprehending and what's going on. Um, and then again, it, it presents an opportunity to spend a lot of time with your family, to connect. A lot of education is going on uh, through the, you know, at home. Parents, it's a great time to get in, in touch with, with, with your child's education. And maybe we'll, I've learned a lot. I'm doing it with my grandson. Um, so I'm, I'm learning. Um, so what, what my message to you is that please uh, be calm, but it's also important that you're the ones, the residents of this town are going to be the ones who determine when this crisis ends, as all the residents of our surrounding communities, the residents of our state, the residents of our nation, and the people of the world. Mankind is going to determine uh, when this crisis is over. We don't want to be put in a position such as Italy, where the entire country has come to a screeching halt. We don't want that to happen in the United States. And we can prevent that by all using common sense and, and helping each other. We're here to help you. Please, if anyone has any questions, feel free to email me. I've been answering my emails as, as much as I can. I'm being inundated as you, as, you can, as you might imagine. But please, we're here to help you. We're here to support you. And, um, we, 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 we are working as hard as we possibly can. We have a, 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 a great team assembled here in Old Bridge. Our OEM is, is staffed and monitored by some great people. Some volunteers um, are, are working to make sure that you are safe and, uh, and protected. And we will get through this. That's the one clear thing that we are going to get through this. We will be fine. 
Um, unfortunately, it might get a little worse before it gets better, but we're all can't wait for that day. And I promise we will have a huge townwide celebration when this does come to an end. So I want to thank you for a few minutes of your time. Please spread the word. Please spread the news um, about, you know, getting the information out there and, and be well and take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anyone. So yourself, your family, your friends, your neighbors, if you have an elderly person that lives in your neighborhood, don't go visit them, contact them by phone, ask them if they need any, anything. I've done that in my neighborhood. If, you, if they need anything, I'll pick it up for them at the store. I will leave it on their front steps. And I think everyone can chip in and take care of everyone. And if you are at risk, if you do have underlying health issues, please be very cautious. Please take care of yourself. Don't think that you're invincible and um, protect yourself from this virus. It's very, um, it's very important that you do that. Thank you so much, everyone. Well, speaking on behalf of myself and everybody at Old Bridge, we look forward to celebrating when this is over. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're very appreciative. Anytime. We probably have more of these, Jacob, so we'll be seeing. Absolutely. We'll see. as, as things change, we will, um, we'll, we'll get the information out there. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you so much for viewing this very special edition of Old Bridge Outlook. Again, my name is Jacob Turchi. Have a lovely day.